Okay, let's look at Revelation 20 a little bit. Or excuse me, uh, 19, I'm sorry, 19. Revelation 19. <clears throat> All right, Revelation chapter number 19. And we looked there at, uh, I think we got down through um, about verse 14. We looked last week at how you and I are the armies which follow God, Jesus Christ, out of heaven. That's me and you. We looked last week from Joel chapter 2 how that you and I will be fighting during the battle of Armageddon. We found out that we are the army of Joel 2. Uh, we will be able to climb up walls like Spider-Man. We'll be able to jump over buildings like Superman. The Bible says that we'll be stabbed through and it won't even hurt us. We are a supernatural army and we fight. We looked at how the armor of God in Ephesians 6 is more than just a spiritual armor that you ought to put on every day, which we believe that. But the Bible says that you may be able to stand with the wiles of the devil and all that kind of stuff. And then it says in the what? Evil day, a singular day. We looked at in the Old Testament how that the evil day is mentioned twice. It is in the Old Testament called the day of evil. It is the second advent, okay? So we looked at how that armor in Ephesians 6 is more than just a spiritual armor. It is a physical armor that we will wear at the second advent, all right? So the armies are following, uh, we're following God out of heaven, the army. We're all clothed in white raiment and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Brother Sammy Allen used to say that we're leaving here like Superman in the rapture, right? We're leaving here like Superman, but we're coming back like the Lone Ranger, amen, on a white horse. The guns are blazing. All right, so you pick up in verse number, uh, we looked at verse 13 about how the vesture dipped in blood. That is not the blood of his enemies. Now, we understand that when Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to st stomp the wine press, and the Bible says that the blood of his enemies, the blood, the blood of the armies of the Antichrist, are going to sprinkle his garments. The Bible says he's going to come back from that battle looking like he'd been treading out the wine press. I'd like to hear Joel Osteen talk about that, okay? We found out in, in, in Psalm 58, this is hard verses for the neo-evangelical and all the lovey-dovey crowd. The Bible says that the second advent, when we get done, we're going to bathe our feet in the blood of God's enemies. That's what the Bible says. That's some tough stuff, ain't it? But that's what the Bible says. We're going to bathe our feet in their blood. So, but we looked at the vesture dipped in blood. That is not their blood, but he's coming with blood already on his vesture that's been dipped, and I believe that that is the blood of Calvary. Remember, we talked about it. His blood, I believe that's Jesus Christ's blood. Because remember, what did the Jews say at his crucifixion? His blood be upon us and upon our children. Well, God said, I'll give you exactly what you want. All right, now look there at verse number 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Uh, of course, you uh, don't have to know what that is. You, you know that's the Bible. That with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. That's not a tattoo, by the way. I get so sick of these people trying to justify tattoos because Jesus has a name written on his thigh. King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Now here's what's interesting. The Bible says here that there's an angel crying out to the to the birds, all the fowls of now. The fowls in the Bible, what do what do birds oftentimes represent in the Bible? Right, it's not good. Anybody know specifically? Devils and unclean spirits. In fact, if you study Isaiah chapter almost said 68. There is no 68th chapter in Isaiah. My brain is not working. Isaiah 34. It's Isaiah 34, 8. You study Isaiah 34, 8, 9, and 10. You actually find that some of the inhabitants of the lake of fire. Remember, the lake of fire is going to be on the earth during the millennial kingdom and in the new heaven and the new earth. The lake of fire is going to be on the earth. So remember, when, we, when you look at that, if you study Isaiah 34, verse 8, 9, and 10, you find that some of the inhabitants of the lake of fire is going to be a bunch of birds. They're unclean, fowls of the air. Remember, what, how is the devil described? Jesus said, a seed that fell by the wayside is he which, uh, you know, which, uh, you know, the, the, seed, the seed was sown, and then a bird came and took the seed. It says, immediately the devil comes and plucks it out of their heart, lest they should believe, or lest they should understand and believe. 
So birds in the Bible are a type of unclean spirits. Except for the dove. The dove is going, Reuben, you back here breaking our boxes, man. Listen, we're going to give you a love offering. You ain't got to steal out of our offering box, okay? <laughs> now watch this. You ready? Except for the dove. Dove's a type of the Holy Spirit. Now, take your Bibles. I'm going to show you some crazy stuff. Take your Bibles. Go to Isaiah 58. I'm going to show you some crazy stuff this morning about these birds. And, the, and notice the Bible says, <laughs> the Bible says, now we're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb, amen? I'm glad for the, but the Bible says there's another supper. There's two suppers at the second advent. There's the marriage supper of the Lamb, which is right before the second advent. And then there's the great supper of our God, which is just right after the second advent. Notice what it says. Where did I tell you to go? Where? Isaiah 58, I think. Yeah. Okay, Isaiah 58. Okay, look at Isaiah 58. I hope this is right, because if not, I don't remember. I got, I got brain fog this morning. Isaiah 58. Oh, let's see here. I don't think this is right. Hold on. Somebody look up for me on their Bible app really quick. Somebody look this up for me on their Bible app. About Just type in sacrifice in Bozrah. B-O-Z-R-A-H. Sacrifice in Bozrah. Tell me where that's at. B-O-Z-R-A-H. It's in Isaiah. Isaiah 34.6. Is that it? Oh, you know what? I think it is actually Isaiah 34.6. Hold on. Let me go there. Yes, it is. Boom. Thank you, Brother Shapiro. Absolutely. All right, Isaiah 34. Look at Isaiah chapter 34. All right, look there at verse number 1, Isaiah 34, 1. You ready? Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. We understand that to be the second advent, right? Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountain shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in, in heaven, Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Bozrah and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. I want you to notice here. The Bible says that when God kills those armies at the second advent, he's doing a sacrifice. He makes a sacrifice in Bozrah. That's some pretty deep stuff. And notice he's sacrificing, and who's he killing all those people for? Who's he getting ready to feed? The birds. The birds. Now, you could, you could get into some weird, wacky stuff in that, but even... If we wanted to get away from the fact that devils are unclean spirits and all that kind of stuff, and and uh, you could say <coughs> that God feeds the sparrows, He feeds the birds, doesn't He? You know Matthew six, you know a sparrow doesn't even fall without your Father know it, and all that kind of stuff. Well, hey, watch this. God says, "Hey, birds, I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you a great." Bible calls it a great supper of our God. He makes a sacrifice, a human sacrifice in Bozrah. He sacrifices those armies. And feeds the birds with the sacrifice. That's some deep stuff there. So he makes a supper. Let's go back to Revelation 18. Do you, but do you, do you see there? And look at verse number 7 really quick if you're still in Isaiah 34. He says, And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. Complete side note, we won't get into all this because I don't have all the scriptures prepared. My mind is definitely not sharp enough this morning. To try to, uh, to try to remember all of it. We'd have to look them all up. But I believe personally we're going to be on white horses at the, white, at, the, at the second advent, just like Jesus. 
But I think those white horses are more than just plain white horses. I think that these are unicorns. You study the unicorns in the Bible, and they always... How, do you know the prayer that Jesus prayed out on the cross, according to Psalm 22? Do you know how it was brought to heaven? By the horn of the unicorns. I think unicorns are spiritual beings, or spiritual creatures. I think they're God's creatures, and that's what I think we ride on at the second advent. I think it's literally going to... Because the Bible talks about coming down upon the unicorn and upon the cherub. I literally believe that these unicorns are probably going to have wings... We're gonna, they're going to have a single horn. They're, 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 if you study unicorns historically, you know, well, I, I don't think they were really real and all. I think they're actually rhinoceroses and stuff. Well, I mean, that, that would be cool, too. We're going to come down and say, have it on white rhinoceroses. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I know that's technically a unicorn. And all unicorns that aren't in any other versions, are they? No, unicorns is completely left out of every other version. So it's interesting, you know, why, why would the devil, because the devil has his hand in all those new versions. Why would he want to corrupt that? Just like Leviathan and you know, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so I think I little side note, some Andrew Sutter theology, take it or leave it. I think we're riding unicorns in the second heaven. You look up that word unicorn or unicorns in the Bible, study it out. Uh, I think maybe you'll come over to my position and and uh, and see that we're riding unicorns in the second half. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you get nothing else out of this Sunday school lesson, you know that we're riding unicorns. Anyway, uh, that'll probably be the only thing that the people on YouTube want to talk about if I put this on YouTube. All right. Now notice, uh, Isaiah, or excuse me, Revelation 19. Somebody give me the time. What time is it? 10.43. 10.43. All right, really quick, really quick. <clears throat> come together in the midst of, uh, excuse me, come and gather yourselves together under the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of my kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Notice it says they're the flesh of horses. We'll end here with a little side note. There's very, a very strong likelihood that part of what goes on during the tribulation with the earth being scorched and all that kind of stuff, there's probably going to be a lot of solar flare, excuse me, during the tribulation period, a lot of solar flares. Now, what happens when there's a solar flare? It really messes up the technology, the electronics. I, I personally believe, and I think there's a lot, because it talks about the second advent, there's going to be swords and bow and arrows and stuff like that. And I know that guns are not electronic, so you know, there could be some guns used. But as far as technology, I think that by that time, most of the technology is just going to be completely fried to the point where they're going to have to use horses. And even now, we still use horses in our armies. I mean, to go up to New York City, you know, they got horses, that, the police use horses and all that kind of stuff. So I, more than likely, there's going to be a more of a primitive method of fighting at the second advent. Um, on top of that, people say, well, you know, there's not enough humans, especially if you take the numbers out of Revelation, how many humans will be left by the end of the tribulation. There's not enough humans to fill that valley with blood. The valley of Megiddo. I've stood in that valley. I've been there. Saw it from, what those they don't understand is horses have like five times more blood in them than humans. And there's going to be horses at the second half. I've got it written. In fact, I think I've got it. I've got it written down in this Bible or my other Bible that I don't have up here. Let me see where, where my note is. Because Revelation 14. I, I got to look at this. Uh, yeah, it's not in this Bible. It's in, a, it's, in my, it's in my other Roman reference Bible, my wide margin, which I think is down in my office. But they've got so many gallons of blood in them. God ain't going to have a Listen, it, it ain't going to be difficult to fill that valley up with blood. Trust me. It's going, it's going to run all the way up to where the horses ride on. All right, anybody got any comments?